In this video, I take a look at a piece of vintage amateur radio test equipment, the Heathkit AM1 antenna impedance meter. Amateur radio operators often need to measure the characteristics of antennas to ensure they're correctly constructed and matched to a transmitter. Heathkit addressed this need with the AM1 antenna impedance meter. It was offered from 1952 to 1960 and typically sold in the U.S. for $19.50 equivalent to about $230 in 2024. It was sold as a kit and was mostly of interest to amateur radio operators or hams. The meter supports measuring resistive impedance from 0 to 600 ohms over the frequency range 0 to 150 megahertz. Accuracy is not specified and depends on the calibration performed. I would estimate 5 to 10 percent accuracy would be typical. It needs a couple of volts of RF input. It's suggested to use the Heathkit GD1 grid dip meter, or equivalent. The input power can't exceed a half watt to avoid damaging the unit. It uses the same size case as the GD1 grid dip meter. Very early AM1 units had a different dial pointer from this one with markings on the case rather than the knob. It's basically a Wheatstone bridge where the input is an RF source such as a signal generator, dip meter, or low power radio transmitter. The output is the device being measured, such as an antenna. One arm of the bridge is a variable resistor. The bridge will be balanced when the unit's resistor matches the resistive impedance of the output load. Balance is indicated by the meter indicating a null, or a lowest point, which is not necessarily zero. The 0 to 600 ohm range covers many common types of antennas used for amateur radio. The primary uses for the unit are measuring antenna impedance at a given frequency, finding an antenna's resonant frequency, estimating standing wave ratio or SWR, measuring a radio receiver's input impedance, monitoring radio transmissions if amplitude modulated, and acting as a field strength meter. The unit is quite simple with only eight parts. It uses two precision 200 ohm resistors, a 600 ohm potentiometer, and another 10K resistor for the meter. A germanium diode rectifies the signal to DC, and two capacitors are used for filtering. The meter is a 100 microamp unit. Everything is mounted on two pieces of metal with some insulating plastic. After partial assembly, it's mounted inside the case. Banana jacks are provided for input and output, as well as a headphone jack for optional monitoring of the signal. Assembly is quite straightforward with the detailed instructions and large illustrations in the Heathkit manual. I can show the basic operation of the analyzer by using a dip meter as the signal source coupled to several turns of wire. The output load can be simulated by connecting a resistance substitution box. In actual use, the load would typically be a radio antenna. Pick a suitable frequency, it's more sensitive at 15 MHz and higher, and adjust the dip meter output level for a reading on the meter. Turn the dial on the AM1 to obtain a null. Then read the resistance off the dial. I'll speak later about dial calibration for more accuracy. Here we can see that I get a good null. If I change the resistance of the load, the null appears at a different dial setting. If the load is not purely resistive, you'll not get a null that goes down to a zero meter reading. This can be used to estimate the standing wave ratio of an antenna. If the signal source is amplitude modulated, such as from a transmitter or signal generator, you can plug headphones into the jack and adjust for a null based on the sound level. You can also monitor the signal. You could couple the unit to a higher power transmitter using a loop of wire. Operation as a field strength meter would require a small antenna like length of wire, and the meter would then indicate the relative signal strength. It's not particularly sensitive, but would work if placed near a transmitting antenna, for example. I bought this unit in February of 2024 from a local eBay seller. It came with an original manual including the fold-out illustrations. 
The manual is dated 12-15-1955. The unit was a little dirty, dented, and there was a crack in one side of the plastic where the terminals are mounted. The 600 ohm potentiometer was faulty. It read about a thousand ohms overall and was open when the contact was on the low end. Possibly it was damaged by too much input. I was surprised to find that 600 ohms is a non-standard potentiometer value and hard to find as a new part. I eventually found a new old stock unit on eBay. The plastic on the dial was a little warped. I straightened it by putting it on a flat surface and heating it in an oven at about 230 degrees Fahrenheit for a period of time, after which it was much flatter. The only other parts were two precision resistors, a germanium diode, two capacitors, and the meter. I decided to totally tear down the unit and rebuild it with new parts other than the meter and precision resistors. The control shaft extender was cracked and had a small clamp on it to make it tighter. I tried gluing the extender, this made of wood, which seemed to work. The germanium diode was a CK705 type, which I replaced with a new 1N60. After rewiring, it worked. It's not particularly sensitive, but this is expected as it needs to overcome the diode drop about 0.4 volts and drive the 100 microamp meter, which requires 1 volt for full scale. I suspect my HD 1250 dip meter produces less output than the older GD1 dip meter that was recommended to be used. It should be possible to increase the sensitivity by using a low forward voltage Schottky diode rather than a germanium one. I didn't have any on hand, but I may try this in future. I made a small pickup coil to couple the signal from the dip meter. The new potentiometer is not particularly accurate relative to the scale markings. Heathkit said that the potentiometer they used was specially selected. Heathkit recommended a calibration procedure in which an accurate ohmmeter was used and the specific dial positions for resistance were marked using a pen or paint. The image here shows a unit where this was done. I avoided doing this as I wanted to keep the unit original. As well as using a resistance substitution box, I tried the unit with my HF and VHF amateur radio antennas and saw a dip around the expected antenna impedance at the frequencies the antennas were designed for. In the last decade or so, very sophisticated but low-cost antenna analyzers have come on the market. A typical unit can measure the complex impedance of an antenna over a range of frequencies. Many models will, in just a few seconds, generate a graph that is shown on a display or can be uploaded to a PC. It's interesting to compare these modern units to the AM1, which was state-of-the-art in 1952 and sold for a similar cost, just over $200 in today's dollars, as modern units. It could only measure resistive impedance over a narrow range and required an external signal source. Given enough time, you could measure impedance over a number of frequencies and plot the results by hand on a graph. That said, it did what it was designed to do with very little circuitry in a small, rugged case. Heathkit sold them for nine years and is believed that many were sold, although they don't show up often on the used market. Possibly many were cannibalized for parts over the years.